Okay, now the tutorial is being displayed. So we'll just try to do this quickly. I mean, as such, uh, you know, uh, the my sincere request to all of you, just you know, try to. We all of us should try to deliver the concept. We should not just grasp the formulas. That is one of the important point. I mean, so as long as uh, we deliver the uh, concepts, you know, without grasping onto more onto the formulas. It should be fine. So here uh, we just have to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis as well as radius of gyration with respect to the x-axis. Now remember that x-axis is not really at the centroid, but that does not matter. I have asked to uh, solve you for the this given axis x. That given axis x is at the middle of this, you know, rectangular area. So we need to discretize into three different areas. This is the first area, let us say, this is the second area and this is the third area. So if you can simply divide it into areas and apply the parallel axis theorem accordingly, then we should be able to get the results. So I need the numbers from you. As such, I have to also make sure if I have the correct answer or not. Okay, so please give me the sending the answers of this. There are a lot of centers are giving the correct answer. Uh, I x moment of inertia, yes, it is of the order of 39 10 to the power 4, okay, 39 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 millimeter to the power 4, and radius of gyration is 21.8. So, tutorial solution if you can look at carefully. So ultimately, uh, this is the shape that was given and these are rectangular areas. So individual centroids are known where they are. They should be middle of all of this. So this was discretized in three areas. So first area was the top part. We call it flange. So that is the top flange. Then we have the wave here that is part two and the bottom flange. This is part three. Okay. So, the three parts it was decomposed. Now, only uh, thing that we have to figure out what is the distance of the centroidal axis of the individual element from the global axis x, because we have to find the moment of inertia about the x axis. So, what we need to know what is this distance? Distance of the first area right it has its own centroid so centroidal axis to the x axis that distance similarly for the bottom flange what is this distance from the centroidal axis to the x axis and remember for the second area centroidal uh, you know of this area centroidal axis coincides with the x axis so we don't have any distance to transfer so therefore we apply the parallel axis theorem so these are you see here that this is for the first area what is the moment of inertia about its own centroidal axis plus we have area multiplied by d square to transfer it to the x axis. So likewise for the second area you just have b h q over 12 there is nothing to transfer because centroidal axis coincides with the x axis. So, we put a 0 here and the third area again the individual you know uh, this is about its own centroidal axis right. Then we transfer it. So, a d square is again there. So, ultimately final answer as you all of you have reported more or less. So, that is the approximate number coming in. Okay? and k x will be simply square root of i x by a. So, that means what it means. So, physically if you look at if I really try to rotate this body you think of a beam okay, stretch it along the z direction 
I try to rotate this about the x axis, it will have more resistance about the x axis because you can always show that k x is greater than k y. If you calculate the k y, you will see that. So, k x is basically giving me the information that as if more area I have about the x axis, which is somewhere lumped from the x axis. So, therefore, it will give me more resistance if I try to rotate this body about the x axis than if I try to rotate the body about the y axis. I would really urge you also try to get the moment of inertia about the y axis, that is very simple. Try to get the k y and get the concept out of it that if I try to bend it about k x and if I try to bend it about k y, which way I am going to get more resistance to the bending okay? or let us say motion. So, now with this, I will just uh, you know conclude this session of planar moment of inertia.